Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Kerwin here with your weekly 5 Minute 5. Today we are featuring historical fiction. Um, so, what is historical fiction? Um, usually the setting is some time in the past. Um, like the Civil War, the Holocaust, things like that. Some characters may be real people, like there might be um, somebody like Adolf Hitler in the book as a minor character, or um, George Washington might be mentioned. Um, but the plot of the book and most major characters are fiction, they're made up. That's why it's called historical fiction. The history part and the setting that's set in the past is real. Um, but the plot and most of the major characters are fictional. So here we go. Our first book talk today is going to be about one that's very popular in the library. It is Al Capone Does My Shirts um, by Jennifer Choldenko. So here we go. Things aren't going Moose Flanagan's way. He has to leave his friends and winning baseball team behind. He never sees his dad because he's always working on his new job and his mom is acting just plain weird. Mom tries to make everyone believe Moose's sister Natalie is 10 when she's really 15 going on 16. But Natalie is a little different. She has autism and sometimes her strange behavior gets Moose into trouble, especially now that he's watching her. What's a 12 year old guy to do? Having to move to your, with your family isn't that unusual Unless you're moving to The Rock, Devil's Island, Alcatraz. I want to be here like I want poison oak on my private parts. But apparently nobody cares because now I'm Moose Flanagan, Alcatraz Island boy. Also, my sister can go to the Esther P. Marinoff School where kids have macaroni salad in their hair and wear their clothes inside out and there isn't a chalkboard or a book in sight. It's 1935 and Moose's dad has just started working as the prison guard on Alcatraz Island. Moose isn't too sure about this 12 acre rock covered with cement, topped with bird turd and surrounded by water. And on Alcatraz, trouble is nearly f never very far away. Other kids live there with their families and most of them seem all right, except for Piper. She's the warden's daughter and sure she's cute, but she's bad news. Piper has a scheme going on all the time and nobody's safe. She lies to her dad, takes her classmates to the cleaners, and is determined to involve Moose in her plans. And let's not even talk about the prisoners. Alcatraz gets the worst of the worst. The convicts other prisoners don't want. One of them is even famous. Alcatraz is home to the notorious gangster Al Capone. When the Flanagan family has a crisis and there's nowhere to turn, will Moose break the most important rule on the island? and contact a convict? Would Moose dare to ask the most famous prisoner of all, Al Capone, for help? Find out in Al Capone Does My Shirts by Jennifer Choldenko. Okay, next up, this one's called The Breadwinner and it's by Deborah Ellis. And I actually just finished reading this book. Um, it's a quick read and I really highly recommend it. Um, and it also was made into an animated movie on Netflix. Um, so definitely check it out. Okay, so here we go. Imagine living in a country where women and girls are not allowed to leave the house without a man. Imagine having to wear clothes that cover your entire body and face whenever you go outside. This is 11-year-old Parvana's life in Afghanistan, where the Taliban run most of the country. Parvana lives with her parents, two sisters, and an infant brother in a one-room, bombed-out apartment building. Parvana's fa father was a history teacher, but now works in the marketplace reading letters for people who cannot read or write. One day, the Taliban came to arrest her father and he's thrown into prison. How will Parvana, her mother, and sisters live without an income and how will they shop for food without a man to escort them? Who is going to take them to the well to get their water? Since women are forbidden to earn money, what can Parvana do to save her family from starvation? Read The Breadwinner by Deborah Ellis to find out. I'm actually going to be reading the first chapter of this this Friday, so check that out if you're interested. All right, next. All right, here's a novel I had to pick because it's eerily similar to what's happening today with the current pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. It's about a disease that um, swept through the country in 1793 
It's called Yellow Fever, and the book is called Fever 1793 by Laurie Halls Anderson. I'm Maddie Cook, a 14-year-old girl living in the city of Philadelphia with my mother and grandfather above our coffee house. I often wake to the sound of a mosquito whining my left ear and my mother screeching in the night. As any kid in my age, I'm sick to death of listening to my mother and just want to get a few more minutes of rest. But after tragedy strikes my city and home, I would do anything to hear my mother's squealing voice telling me to wake up. If only the fever was a dream, but, but to my harsh realities, this disease happened and my world was turned upside down. No one was about, businesses were closed, and houses were shuttered. Does that sound familiar? I could hear a woman weeping. Some houses were barred against intruders. Yellow rags fluttered from railings and door knockers, pus yellow, fear yellow, to mark the homes of the sick and dying. Larry Halls Anderson shares the story of the historical misfortune of ailments that swept my si the city of Philadelphia in her novel, Fever 1793. And she was fighting to stay alive. And it's very um, appropriate obviously, with what's going on right now. Okay. My next book is actually part of a series we have um, at the Lake Riviera Library. Um, a whole series of these books, these Dear America books. And this one is the main character. What they're about is the main character writes about um, from the point of view of someone that experiences certain famous events, um, historical events. Um, so this one is about a girl who is aboard the Titanic, and it's called Voyage on the Great Titanic, The Diary of Margaret Ann Brady, and it's written by Ellen Emerson White. So, Margaret, she can't believe her good fortune. Sister Catherine has told her that a rich American woman is looking for a companion on her trip to America. Margaret has never been chosen to go along. Margaret thought she'd be in the London orphanage forever. Now she will be sailing to America on the most wonderful ship, the RMS Titanic. She hoped to reunite with her brother and begin a new life in Boston. Little does she know how the next few weeks will change her forever. Join Margaret Ann Brady aboard, aboard the voyage on the Titanic. Okay, now our final book is set during the Holocaust. Um, it is called The Upstairs Room. And it's by Joanna Reese. And it's similar to the true story um, that was written in the Diary of Anne Frank. Annie and her sister, uh, Sini, are hiding in a room in a farmer's house above the kitchen. They're hiding from the Nazis who will be searching Holland for Jews to put in their concentration camps. Before they went into hiding, when they were living in the town of Winterswick, their whole town turned against them, insulting and hurting them in many ways. They also knew that the Nazis would soon find them. So Annie's family decided to move to the countryside to, ha to hide from the Nazis and from the cruelty of the townsfolk and the dangers they face. Annie's dream is to eventually go to America and she hopes she can go uh, and live there freely. But will she survive these horrible events? And will she ever get to America? This is actually, um, even though it's a fictionalized story, it's actually based on um, the author's real experiences during the Holocaust in um, Holland. So definitely check it out if you're interested in those kind of books. If you've read Milkweed or The Boy Who Dared or um, Number of the Stars, you'd probably enjoy it. Um, so if you are interested in any of these books that I just went over, um, look at my Google Classroom. There are links to um, places to get them, like Junior Library Guild or the Ocean County Library. And also come back next week because I'll be fe featuring, um, for my 5 Minute 5, I'll be featuring realistic fiction. And thanks for watching. Keep reading.